Hey guys, since my last video about the new modes added to the game was a bit negative, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about the more positive sides of uh, the major update which we had. And um, I wanted to take a kind of closer look at the eternal items that we got as well as some um, hidden changes which weren't mentioned in the patch notes. So talking about hidden changes, the first change which um, we've noticed on our server is that um, there's been quadruple magic stat items added to the game. That's right, you heard me right folks. So we have triple uh, four items added to the game, and this is what this looks like. So it's got elite damage 4%, uh, damage to demons 4%, primary attack 6%, and critical hit damage 4.5%. If this had crit chance, this would have been a hell of an item, but even so, it's still insane. Um, if you can't tell, this is a uh, Paragon 1300 item. This is for Inferno 6. So it has 1822 combat rating, um, and this was farmed in open world uh, in Inferno 6, obviously. And um, if we just compare this item to the old triple triple items which we had, uh, I think I have one here in my inventory which I farmed on my wizard. So this is the triple triple uh, item. It has uh, three magic uh, affixes, and it only goes up to a 1802 combat rating. So now we have 1822 combat rating, which is plenty more combat rating items with four magic affixes. So this is pretty insane. This is the first thing which was added. So now let's talk about the Eternal Gear. So one of my friends actually got insanely lucky and he got a, an Eternal item with perfect stats like one hour into the uh, update. And I think he got it from the uh, health layer bounties, which was just insane to me. So this is what the Eternal item looks like. It's pants with also with 1822. So he also did this in the Inferno 6. He did the health layer bounty in Inferno 6. And this is what the stats look like. So if you're a Crusader, you you will know how good this item is. So it's got Falling Sword uh, generates one additional sword which follows you and deals 14,000 damage uh, with a three second cooldown. And it has a draw on quarter, has a 10% chance of generating an explosion, dealing 7,700 damage every for every two meters moved. And then it has um, damage taken while uh, suffering loss of control. This is a max uh, stat and beneficial effect duration, which is also max. So this is just completely bonkers and really insane. So if you haven't noticed, it's got this zero out of four here. And uh, there seems to be a common misconception that you need four items with this um, stat on to ha have it activated, but this isn't the case, and I'll show this in my uh, testing. But um, my friend actually got another item which I wanted to show, which is from Inferno 5 here, and it's um, this one here, which is also another pants, which is um, has 1726. So this isn't an eternal item, but it has a uh, magic, uh, one of the new magic attributes, which is this uh, shield charge cooldown, and it's a triple two basically, and it has one seven two six. This is linked to the paragon level that it was found on, obviously, and the higher your paragon level, the higher the uh, combat rating will be. But what's interesting is that you can find these items um, in uh, the terror rifts or anywhere in uh, the. Uh, Pillars or Hell uh, Slayer Bounties. So this is still obviously a good item, but the thing which differentiates uh, this from an Eternal item is that an Eternal item will have four magic attributes, and two of those magic attributes will be from the new pool of magic attributes, which is, for example, one of these. So now let's talk about the common misconception which I mentioned, which is that these items uh, require all four to function. So I've got a chest here with the, one of the new uh, magic affixes. So um, this isn't an eternal item because obviously it's uh, just an exceptional uh, double uh, double attributes and double magic attributes. And I've also got the helmet here, which is the same. It also has the conjuration of light. You can see it's two out of four at the moment. And it's also a double double item. So um, you can actually find just uh, double single magic attributes. Uh, for example, um, let me see if I have it here. So in right here, you've got a double with one of the single magic attributes. You can find these items commonly also from uh, any of the new modes. So let's now test how this um, new magic attribute performs. So it says Conjuration of Light increases your movement speed by 8%. Okay, and I've got two pieces of it. So right now my movement speed is 10%, as you can see, and I'm just gonna press my Conjuration of Light and quickly check how my movement speed uh, changes. So right now you can see my movement speed has changed to 26%, so it's gone from 10% to 
So I actually gained 16% movement speed. So this 8%, which is the green number here, has twice the effect. So it's actually stacked, which is 8 plus 8. And if I had this four times, it would be 32 um, total movement speed gained, which would put my movement speed from 10 to 42, which is just crazy. I mean, this effect itself is not so good, I'm not going to lie. But if we just take a look at some of the other effects, for example, the eter eternal item, which I was looking at earlier, uh, which is uh, this one, you can see that it has this falling sword, uh, one additional sword, and this is a green number, and it also has this damage. So I'd assume that it potentially could give you additional swords, which is just insane. So Crusaders actually like to use um, this main hand essence here, which reads falling sword now follows you, damaging nearby enemies and reducing their movement speed. This is kind of an auto attack uh, ability, and if you can kind of duplicate the swords from this, uh, technically, you can have four additional swords if this is correct. I mean, I'm not too sure if uh, the it's just the um, damage which gets increased or just or as well the uh, number of additional swords. But overall, this is uh, super crazy. I mean, it ha still has a three second cooldown, but even so, it's just really, really insane. And I'd assume that any of these uh, green numbers here will just increase the more... Um, the more items you have of the same attribute. So it's kind of annoying that it doesn't reflect here. Like I'd love to have seen this number change as I add more items, but I guess we can just do the maths ourselves and just check the stats in our character sheet. So um, as well as the uh, Falling Sword plus one, I know that the Demon Hunter class and the Wizard class, which I've played before, also have uh, very similar essences. So the Demon Hunter, in case you didn't know, has Impale um, plus one, so you can have extra knives on your Impale. And the Wizard has uh, a uh, Disintegrate Beam, so you can have extra Disintegrate Beams in your build. That's just insane. I mean, if you can have... Imagine a Wizard just running with, like, five different Disintegrate Beams. So I'm going to have a full list uh, in the description below with all of the uh, attributes and the full patch notes. And you can check that out in your own time. I'm not going to be going through it all in this video because it would just be way too long. But it's just interesting to see how the meta is going to shift. Because in my opinion, how I perceive it shifting is that um, combat rating is no longer going to be king in most um, modes. I mean, you still have this uh, combat rating... Um, if you're over the combat rating, you'll have this extra damage, 11%, which um, increases. But I think as long as players hit this, you don't need to be so much higher. Like, for example, you don't need to be almost 3k higher combat rating to gain this 11% um, increase. So I could foresee players uh, using uh, lower combat rating items just to get those um, kind of extra magic attributes, depending on how good they are. And me personally, I'm probably going to be keeping just a set in case of my highest combat rating items just so I can run raids and uh, challenge rifts. But um, I guess if you're a whale and you have a very high resonance and you have combat rating coming from your gems, you can be a bit less conservative with that. And uh, depending on that, adjust your strategy, uh, whether you want to keep the higher combat rating items or just the items that give you the most uh, synergy with these eternal um, magic properties. So that's about all I have for this one, guys. I hope you've liked this video. If you've learned something new, then consider liking the video and subscribing. In my next video, I'll be talking about the dungeon changes they made, as well as the loyalty essence bonus changes they made. So stay tuned for that one, guys. But I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.